I'm so glad you decided to join me for our game. Uh, this game I told you in the in our uh, calendar video is called the More or Less game. Now, grown-ups, I have to start off by explaining to you that when we're working with numbers and math concepts, we have to start where your child is at. So we have to first fig figure out and make sure that your child recognizes certain numbers, is able to count out certain numbers, and we start with the low numbers first, and then we work our way up. So when we're in school, Mary, I'm able to uh, customize it to your child's level, so I always have a variety of materials out when we're playing the game, and then I switch it up depending on where your children are at. So I'm going to show you the different ways you start low, and then you, you can build on these skills. So first you want to start with the low numbers to make sure that your child has one-to-one -one correspondence. And that means that when they see a number, they understand that there are objects that they can count out um, to go along to correspond with that number. So I just happen to have these leaves because in, I talk about uh, butterflies and caterpillars and stuff with threes. So here you have a leaf with the number two. So you want to make sure that your child understands the name of the number, and that what two means, and that they can count out two objects. So these are just pom these are just pom poms that we pretended are um, butterfly eggs. So we have two. We have three, so they have to be able to count out three. Now again, I'm starting with these low numbers, but you could always draw leaves that have six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way up to twenty if you want. Uh, but I just wanted to give you an idea. It doesn't have to be leaves. It could be squares or circles. It could be something seasonal that you pick up because if you've noticed from your time in my class, we basically do the same things over and over and over again, but we just kind of change. Maybe they don't use pom-poms. Maybe they use erasers The in Target in the dollar area. You can usually get those little bags of seasonal erasers. Right now you might find rainbows and flowers or in at Christmas time you might find Christmas trees and Santa faces. Um, so if you always have a, a variety of manipulatives like that, you can really do the same activity over and over and over again, but just switch it up with the things that you use. So once you know what your child is able to count up to as far as one-to-one -one correspondence, so here's I'm going with these higher ones. So you, you're going to say to them, uh, okay, that's number five. So let's count out five. One, two, three, four, five. Then what I did was I took a die and I covered it up. I usually use those little circle dots that you can get. You can get them at the dollar store or Staples. I cover up the die. I cover up, you know, the dots and the numbers on the die. And I put whatever I want on it. So I'm, right now I'm just using masking tape because I couldn't find my dots. We're working on more and less. One more or one less. So you can have your child roll the die. And whatever word comes. Now I, I only covered two sides. But you would cover all six sides with more, one more, one less. So this came up more. So you say to your child, okay, there's five pom-poms there. What would one more make? Now, we want the children to be able to do that in their head. But if they can't do that in their head, you physically do it. Because it's always important to use the actual objects, to not just throw out numbers and ask them to do everything in their head. Some children are capable of doing that. And that's when they really, really understand, understand num number concepts. But if your child is not there yet, they always have to use the concrete object. So you say, OK, now. Put one more there, and let's see how many there are all together. And then have your child count them out. And make sure that they touch with their finger each time they say the number. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we had five. One more makes six. Okay, start with the five again. Tell them roll the die again. And maybe they'll come up with less. So now you say to them, there's five on that leaf. What would one less be? Hmm, five. One less than five. 
if they can do it in their head, awesome. I'm going to tell you number four. But if they can't do it in their head, use the actual object. You say, well, one less means you have to take one away. So take one away. Now count how many there are. One, two, three, four. We've had five. And one less is four. So, of course, you don't have to use anything at all if your children really, really have, if they really understand the numbers and they recognize the numbers, and that's fine. You don't need to use these at all. You can just roll a die. So this is a die that has higher numbers on it. I printed this off the internet, and I used cardstock, and you cut it and fold it, and then I just took packing tape to kind of give it a little bit more sturdiness. So this has the higher numbers, 5, 8, 7, a six, ten, nine. Okay, so if your child is ready for those larger numbers, have them roll the large die. And whatever number's on top, this is number seven. So say to them, What would one more be? And we're, we're working on trying to get them to do it in their head. But again, if they can't do it in their head, have them count out the objects and say, Okay. One more, because of course we would have rolled the die to find out whether it was more or less, right? Okay, so we have one, so we had seven. Let's count out seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now it's always easier for children to count when the objects are in a straight line. When they have that down pat, circle or a square or all zigzaggy when it's all just a mess that's when it's the hardest to keep track of but again you keep increasing the difficulty of what you're asking your children to do so a straight line is where you always start and always start from the left to the right because when you're reading you want their eyes to start on the left and go to the right so whenever we're counting it's always a good idea to have them start on so let's count them. We have seven on the die. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, if we want to do one more, how many problems will we have? One more. If they can't do it in their head, one more than seven. Put one more down on the tray or the table and have them count it out. One, two, three. Eight all together. And if you use those words all together, one more, again, one less, we have seven, one less, so we have to take one away. You're using those math words so that when they get into kindergarten, they'll already be pretty solid with, with what those concepts mean. So again, it's a game that you can use. Two die, you can use the low numbers or the higher numbers depending on where your child is at. And everybody is starting at a different point. Children are born at a different time of the year. Children just understand numbers differently at different points in their development. And wherever they are, it's absolutely fine. But just make sure that you start where they're at and then you challenge them a little bit and you gradually build it, um, making it more progressively but you don't want to start off with something that's too difficult and turn them off to numbers. In fact, start with the little numbers, and children will have a lot of success with that. And then you want to build on the successes, and, um, and I'm sure that your children will have wonderful number sense before they get into um, school and into kindergarten if you play this throughout the summer. All righty, thanks for joining me for, for, for this game. And again, remember, if you don't have pom-poms, you can use anything. You could use cubes. You could use those erasers that I mentioned earlier. Um, you could use cars if you have matchbox cars. Uh, beads. It, it could be clips. It could be, and it could be shoes if you want to use something really, really big and, and really um, make it a little bit silly. So I hope you get to do this game with your children, and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for joining me, and have a great day.